go, go, hit that subscribe button. <laughs>So a couple of weeks ago I made a video on here about the character Wally, aka Waldo. The Where's Waldo books were a huge part of my childhood and revisiting them again in adult life really hit me in the nostalgia feels. So much and so that I began to think back on another popular character from my childhood, one I kind of always felt shared a connection with Waldo. I am of course talking Inspector Gadget. Now I can't quite put my finger on it and I know that others might disagree but to me these two characters just seem to fit together almost like they exist within the same universe. Anyway, researching Waldo led me down the path to Inspector Gadget, and so here we are now making a video about this fun-loving idiot cyborg secret agent. A Robocop for kids. So I was first introduced to Inspector Gadget via the reruns of his 1983 animated show. We then had a live-action movie in 1999 starring Matthew Broderick, and later a CGI show in 2015, although that is one I haven't yet seen. In the original 1983 animated series, we learn that Gadget was given his robotic parts by a scientific genius known as Professor von Slickstein. However, we would later see, I believe in the final episode, that Gadget had all his, well, gadgets as an infant. But hey, these are cartoons, right? They don't need to make sense. In fact, I somewhat recall a time travel episode where a caveman ancestor of Gadget also had modern tech. But my favourite go-to story of how Gadget became the way he was, was found on the back of a bubblegum trading card, where it states that Gadget was a man formerly known as John Brown, who slipped on a banana skin and fell down a flight of stairs, needing to be rebuilt by doctors who also gave him various upgrades. Within the series, it is often Penny and Brain who saved the day, being the real detectives of the show, and Gadget simply being an idiot bringing in the laughs. Looking back now as an adult mindset, it is clear to see that Penny was included in order to empower children, showing them how intelligent and useful they can often be. She is certainly the real hero of the story. Now maybe I was alone in this, but I always wondered who her parents were. After all, she refers to Gadget as Uncle Gadget, and I often wondered whether or not Claw was actually her father. Speaking of Claw, did you know that he was voiced by Frank Welker, also known for his work as Iceman in Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, Fred in various Scooby-Doo projects, and Stripe in Gremlins. So I joked before that Inspector Gadget was kind of a kid-friendly version of Robocop, but do you know what, the more I think about it, he kind of is. It's almost as if the creators of this character merged both Inspector Clouseau of Pink Panther fame and Robocop together to create Gadget. In fact, the pilot episode of the 1983 series actually saw the character of Gadget sporting a moustache, but this was removed from the character by episode 2, as it made him look all too similar to the aforementioned Clouseau. And I personally think that this was for the best, as Gadget without a moustache just seems like a more likeable oddball goof. Now it's clear that the similarity was done on purpose by the creators as a form of spoof on the spy genre, and that is backed by the other similarities to that of the Mission Impossible TV show, where messages to the agent would self-destruct after viewing. Were you a fan of Inspector Gadget when you were a kid? Do you think that they should revitalise the character and maybe bring him back for a new show? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.